Peace. Welcome, my friend, to the second part of this series about understanding fat loss, plant-based fat loss, we'll say. And today we'll be talking about the gut microbe and your gut's role in fat loss, weight loss, and in your overall health. Because most people overlook the most important part of their body, the most important system in their body, which is the digestive tract. The reason why it's the most important is because it controls more hormones that flow through your body than your brain does. It has more organisms. There are more organisms in your gut than there are cells in your body. So by understanding the gut, you will be light years ahead of those who don't. So if you're having health issues, if you're looking to lose weight, if you're looking to lose fat, preferably not just weight, then the approach to healing your gut is the right way to go. And peace, peace to you, Supreme. And I want to thank everybody for taking their time and investing in themselves and being right here right now. There's a million other things you could be doing right now, but you decided to join me and give me some of your time so I can pour into you this knowledge about how you can live healthy. So um, with that being said, before we start anything, now that you know what it's going to be about, everybody, put a seven in the comments. Let me know how you're feeling. Put that seven in the comments to let me know you're feeling good and you're ready for the information that we got going on today. Um, I got my notes here in front of me, so I'm going to do my best to stay on track. You dig? So we're going we gonna to keep it going. Blessings to you as well. Absolutely. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. So let's get started then. Now that we're here, everybody's dropping their sevens. I see, I see the energy. I feel the energy. I appreciate it. So why do I do this first off? Why do I do this? Why do I get on and share what I've learned over my eight years of being plant-based and my 20 some odd years of focusing on health and building my body? Because I've seen enough people that I care about lose the quality of their life that I don't want other people to experience that. I'm on a mission to help other people improve the quality of their life by breaking the generational curse of passing on bad eating habits. So it's not just you that I want to impact. I want to impact your kids and your kids' kids because children don't watch, don't listen to what we say. They watch what we do. So if you want to impact them, let's go ahead and and get, and get it going now. I appreciate you, Divine Love. Appreciate that bad. I appreciate the comments on my beard. I've been growing it for a while now. So now... Um, now that I'm here and I've told you why, let's jump in. So today is part two of the video series. I'll be going live all the rest of this week at nine o'clock talking about understanding plant-based fat loss. And today we'll be talking about understanding the gut's role in fat loss. So I gave a quick brief introduction about what the gut is, but let's dive deeper because in order to make a change, I think you must have a base knowledge so that you can make better decisions because you don't in order to make better choices in order to make better decisions you need better information and so by starting at the base level i'm going to give you the building blocks to get started so that you can have the basic knowledge to make the better choices because living healthy is not difficult it can be simple but in order to make it simple you have to know what you're doing that's what makes it hard is not knowing so Let's dive in. What is the gut? It's a, it's a general term that we use to describe the gastrointestinal tract. That's the scientific name. And the common layman's term is the digestive system. It is, a, it is made up of your mouth. Believe it or not, your mouth is a part of your digestive system because your saliva actually starts the digestive process. Your esophagus is a part of the digestive system. Then it drops down into your stomach then you have your large intestines and your small intestines. Then you have your colon and your rectum. All of that is a part of your digestive system. It all plays a role. So by first understanding what it is, <clears throat> you can understand what areas you need to focus on because most people just think their gut is their stomach or their intestines. But 
didn't think that it was all of those things involved. And if you really want to go deeper, the pancreas, the liver, and the kidneys play a role in what the gut does because, yes, yes, this will be recording and I will be posting it. So the reason why those are kind of ancillary or auxiliary parts of the digestive system, in my opinion, is because the liver, the pancreas, <clears throat> and the kidneys all deliver some kind of digestive enzyme to the gut or is triggered by something that happens in the gut. So those are a part of it as well. You need a hug where here's a, let, let's everybody give, give her a big hug. Here you go, right there. A big hug for you. Send all that love and energy your way. So um, if you have questions, do your best to ask your questions in the question box so that they don't get lost in the comments. Thank you for joining me, those who are jumping in. So the digestive system are all of those individual organs that I just went over. Now, the digestive system itself, can, and I, I'm going to have to read these because these are some big numbers. The digestive system contains 100 billion bacteria. 100 billion bacteria. 99% of all the microorganisms in your body live in your gut. Like I said at the beginning, there are more microorganisms in your gut alone than there are cells in your body. So that just lets you know how important the gut is. Using the bathroom, what can I do to add more food to drink? So Brooklyn, New York, NYC, throw that question in the question box and I'll come back to questions in a minute because I want to get this information out because in getting this information out, that's going to actually answer that question for you. So to ensure that I answer it and come back to it, throw it in the actual question box down below so that I can ensure that I get back to it. <clears throat> so what the gut does or what the gut is, the gut or let's see, let's talk about how. Let's so now that we did that. How does the gut get activated? How do we do that? The gut actually is activated when by two things or three things. Where do you where do I find your question box? So the question box when you're on live across the bottom, I believe, because I don't know what it looks like from the other side, uh, there is somewhere where you can post the question or it says ask the question. Or like the little symbol. So it's probably the the comment box with the question mark in it because when I go there it's the question section uh, I hope that helps um, where was I so breaking up so we talked about what the gut is now let's talk about how the gut gets involved in the digestive process so just seeing food smelling food begins the digestive process because once you see or smell food, it starts to release digestive enzymes to prepare your gut for the food that it's about to get. So right there alone, seeing and smelling food can control what you eat and how you eat. So if you're someone who is looking to lose fat, it would probably be in your best interest to remove yourself from environments where you're having access to foods that look and that that, were, that you're going to see or smell that's going to entice you to want to eat those foods so that's one way that it's going to play a role so you see how all this starts to interplay and intertwine with each other so the gut is crazy so not only so I'm going to go back to, to, to what for a second because I talked about how, but I'm going to go back to what. Comedian Mogul, thanks for jumping in. Sis, appreciate all y'all for, for, for spending some of your time with me or investing your time with me. So why is the gut important? Let's, let's talk about that because I talked about what it is and how it's activated. Let's talk about why it's important. The gut influences your brain. Let's talk about that again. The gut influences your brain so where oftentimes people say oh I ate it and I couldn't resist that's a true statement you have to truly truly condition your mind to take and make better choices because your gut 
is going to signal a brain, send a signal to your brain to eat if it is not properly programmed. How do you properly program it? We'll get there in a second. But how does the brain, how does the gut control the brain? We thought that the brain controlled the body, the rest of the body, right? Well, the gut has its own nervous system, believe it or not. And that's why it takes you can digest food. It takes about two hours for food to digest in your stomach with the, with its acids and everything. And you aren't, don't have to think about it at all. And in that time, your body, the, the intestines are, are, are a large muscle. So they're, con, they're constantly contracting and retracting or contracting and, and loosening, for lack of for saying it worse, to move the food throughout the different parts of the digestive system. So all of that is happening without you even thinking about it. True, our heart beats and our lungs go off unconsciously, but this is something that's completely different. It's a completely whole different thing. And so as the body starts to digest the food, the gut microbe starts to activate and tell different hormones to release in the body. And those hormones trigger different activities in your body. And that's why your gut controls your brain. So by ensuring that your gut microbe and your gut is properly aligned, you can take your brain back. Or a better way of saying it, your gut can hijack your brain. And that's how you end up addicted to sugary, salty, and oily foods. Because your gut will literally hijack your brain and you know that you shouldn't be eating it. But because you haven't conditioned your brain to be strong enough to fight the gut, you end up eating it anyway. So again, how all this ties back to fat loss or you gaining additional fat is because you haven't set up that barrier. So what are these hormones that, I, that I'm talking about? Also, the gut is important in the immune response, which is a part of the lymphatic system because of the hormones that it releases. So your gut is a huge portion of where we go my black vegan man the first brain so there are some people that say that it's the first brain because it tells your brain what to do um, I talk about that a lot so the gut is imperative important vital I, I don't know what words you want to use to get over the significance let's add another word in there talk about the parasites start to control the gut this is controlling you that's what we were just talking about so the the parasites that he's talking about are when you have an unhealthy gut flora or the microorganisms within your gut parasites are a microorganism and microorganisms like to multiply and because those they multiply, they crave certain foods. That's how you end up with cravings for salt, sugar, and oil, because that's what the parasites want. And once they latch on and they start to eat, they affect your brain because they're sending different signals. They affect how your organs begin to work. So by starving those parasites, you can change and take control back of your body. Oftentimes, we are not in control of our bodies. We are being sentient beings to the parasites that are controlling us through our gut. So that, that whole science fiction movie stuff is real. It is truly real. It's not as drastic as that, but it is really. So let's get back to the guts responsible for the hormones. So most of the hormones that you see or that you know about, the gut is responsible for. Let's talk about some of the most important ones first. And we'll talk about ghrelin. If you don't know what ghrelin is, ghrelin is the hormone that is responsible for how much of an appetite you have and how often you have that appetite. So if your gut floor is giving off excess ghrelin you're going to have a ravenous appetite you're going to be hungry if you have an unhealthy level of ghrelin even after being full you're going to eat because your body's telling you to again how the gut can hijack the entire body and brain the second one that we'll talk about is leptin 
leptin is an epicyte. It's the hormone that works to actually do the opposite of ghrelin. It is the appetite suppressor. So ghrelin, I mean, leptin is released once you've had, once you've reached satiety to tell you to stop eating, to suppress your appetite. There are certain foods that you can eat that have additional leptin in it or that will trigger the leptin response that will decrease your appetite. So those are foods that you can add in. We'll get into some of those at, at the end. One of the most important ones for this conversation are cortisol and insulin. Both of these are hormones that are released by the gut as well. We'll talk about cortisol quickly. Cortisol is the response that drops hormones in our body after stress. It's the, the stress hormone. However, cortisol, once it hit the gut, it makes you, because it puts you in that fight or flight, it wants more energy. So it makes you crave quick energy. Well, the quickest energy for the body is sugar. Body, you, the body uses energy in this, in this way. Carbohydrates, i.e. glucose. Fat. Muscle. It goes in that order. The reason being is... It has less work to get the energy out of a glucose cell. It has a little bit more work to get the get the energy out of a fat cell, and it has a lot of work to get the energy out of a muscle cell. You're very welcome, very welcome. So, by controlling the amount of cortisol you have in your body, will control the amount of sugar and salty foods that you're craving and oily foods that you're craving which ties back into the the second one the next hormone which is insulin it also controls testosterone estrogen and progesterone but those we won't talk about right now because they although they do play a role in fat loss and how much your, you, of an appetite you have right now we'll stick on insulin because that's the biggest role in how much fat you accumulate so if you're having problems with any of this, and I'll probably, I, let me make this post right now. For help. So all of the information that I'm teaching you, I know because it's what I teach the members of my Healthy and Fit in 90 program. So it's a program where you can get one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, a meal plan and customized workout plan to help you fix all of these problems. If you want to learn more about that and see how it can help you, DM me the word, what word are we gonna use today? DM me the word fit. To book a free discovery call. All right. So those of you who are asking questions and, and not sure how to actually implement any of this stuff that I'm talking about. That's what I do for people is I teach them how to make this a part of their everyday life. So DM me the word fit and we'll start the conversation and get you a free discovery call to see if the healthy and fit in 90 program is right for you. So now that I've done that plug and you know that there is help for you, let's get back to this insulin thing. So insulin is influenced by your gut microbes because it influences the blood glucose level by acting directly on the liver. Why is that important? The liver is the prop, the part of the body that actually processes fat. Let's think about that again. Your stomach doesn't process fat. This is why I said the liver is a part of your digestive tract in my opinion. The body processes fat through the liver. That's why some people can end up with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease because their liver is processing so much fat that it starts to accumulate around the liver. Mm. And how, do, how does that happen? Well, the body cannot process fat and sugar at the same time because it's something about fat that prevents and blocks insulin from being able to make sugar get into the cell. So let's let's take it a step back. In order for the sugar to get into the cells to be used as energy, the body releases insulin. Insulin works as a key, and sugar and glucose itself 
cannot cross the barrier, the membrane into the cell. Insulin works as the key that unlocks the cell so that the sugar or the glucose, let's, I'll use them interchangeably because they're the same thing, so that the glucose can get into the cell to be actually processed as energy. So what happens is the excess fat in the food that you're eating blocks the insulin from being able to unlock the cell. So now you have the body dumping additional insulin into the bloodstream to force and try to force that sugar, that glucose into the cell. And be now that it's not working, that's how you end up with insulin resistance. That insulin resistance is what is referred to as type 2 diabetes. Hmm. Now, why is that important? Well, when the body cannot force that glucose into the cells to be processed as energy, it has to do something with it. So it sends it to the liver to be processed as fat. And now it turns it into fat so that it can be used as energy later. The body sees everything you eat as either energy to use now or energy to use later. Simple as that. And so if it cannot use the glucose, it says, okay, cool, let's store it. Well, the body doesn't store glucose. It doesn't have a way of doing that. It turns it into fat and that's how it is stored. It turns them into fat cells and that's how you end up with more fat cells than you did when you started out. So why, why am I talking about all this? Again, to tie it back in, your gut is what's responsible for the amount of insulin your body releases because of the foods that you've eaten. You see, you see how it ties back in? So your gut is responsible for holding all these billions of bacteria that break down and eat the food that you have. And as it breaks it down, it produces a byproduct, just like anything else that breaks down something. And so if you have enough bad bacteria it's going to crave more of these things and it's going to release more of the chemicals that are not healthy and good for the body. That's why the gut is responsible. And when you fix your gut, you can fix allergy issues. When you fix your gut, you can fix a whole a host of illnesses without the, throughout the body because everything starts in the gut. So um, it affects estrogen levels, progesterone, as well as testosterone levels. So you can see the importance that the gut plays here. So now that we've talked about what it is, how it is activated, why it's important, and really why it's important through all the hormones, let's talk about how you end up with good bacteria or bad bacteria. Because what you eat matters. And that's really what it comes down to. That's why oftentimes fasting will help your gut microbe because it starves the bad bacteria. Now, I'm not a proponent for fasting for long periods of time. Um, juice fasting is cool, water fasting, short fasting periods. When, do, when done with the proper intention in the proper way, fasting can be great. Intermittent fasting is cool, but everybody intermittent fast already because if you sleep for eight hours, six to seven hours, guess what? It's intermittent fasting. It, for instance, like I had my last meal at, before I got on here at 8.30. I won't eat again until tomorrow when I have my smoothie at about 8, 7, 8 o'clock. That's 11 hours of fasting right there. So you you don't have to make this intermittent fasting something super crazy. You already do it. So, and I, I say that for those who think that they have to do all of these extreme things in life to fix health. And you don't. So, what you eat matters. So, what you eat is either going to feed the good bacteria and help it multiply, or it's going to feed the bad bacteria and help it multiply. And there's only enough room in your gut for one or the other. So, as you build more unhealthy gut, my, gut bacteria, you're crowding out the bad, the good bacteria, and vice versa. So foods that feed the bad bacteria, because I know you're sitting on like, well, what feeds the bad bacteria? Exactly how do you break the fast? The best way to break fast is with fruits, smoothies, or juice, fresh juice. 
So again, any questions, make sure you throw your questions in the question box so that we can I can stay on task and I'll make sure to answer as many que all the questions at the end. So stick around or come back in a few minutes if you don't want to spend all of your time with me. You got other things going or just put it down and finish doing whatever you're doing. You dig? There will be a replay. It will go up for that. So foods that feed bad bacteria. What are they? What are the foods that you're eating and consuming on a daily basis? basis that are feeding the bad bacteria what are they do you do so if, if anybody knows what food they are throw them in throw them in the comment section let's make this interactive i don't want to sit here and preach at you let's make this interactive if you know what foods feed bad bacteria throw it down in in the comment section for me And if you don't know, it's all right. That's what you're here for, learn. So bread, that's going to be one of them. Good. And I'll tell you why bread is on that list. If you get certain sugars, so sugar is one of them. Start sugar, fats, there we go, pork. Definitely, definitely. I see those. I see those red meat, absolutely. Sugar, yep, come on with it, come on with it. So the foods that feed bad bacteria are high in sugar, high in salt, high in oil. These are going to be your high process, the highly and I don't I, highly processed, overly processed, extremely processed, processed foods is going to be number one. Any kind of meat, I don't care whether it's white meat, dark meat, clean meat, meat with the skin on it, meat with no skin, meat that didn't been air fried, meat that didn't been deep fried, meat that didn't been air um. That, that then been smoked, grilled, barbecued, filleted, fricasseed. I don't care how you cook it. Meat is going to feed the bad bacteria in your body. There is no fiber in meat. All meat is, is decaying flesh. That is a... The, that animal's use of the food that it ate so any nutritional value that you're getting from animal products is secondary because that animal didn't eat animal that animal ate some kind of fruit vegetable or grain so number one meat number two dairy dairy again is a byproduct of animal so of course that's going to have that bad micro feeding process so dairy in any form if it comes from a cow so we're talking about milk we're talking about yogurt we're talking about ice cream we're talking about butter we're talking about the powdered stuff like that's why again processed foods are horrible because they're filled with sugars fats and oils and butters and milks and all of this extra stuff and then you got the extra things like sugar Somebody talked about alcohol. So a little bit of alcohol isn't bad. However, alcohol does feed the bad gut microbes because it releases, um, as the body processes it, the chemical that it, that, rele that it releases. Inflammation is caused by bad gut microbes. So let me, let's see, because I know this person had a question. Oh, that question went away, so they must have left. All right. So... Now that we just talked about the foods that feed the bad microbes. Yeah, fish. Fish feed bad microbes too. I know, you know my thoughts on fish is don't eat it. The reason for several reasons, especially if you have health issues, but I'll just tie into one that I was reading about here. Um fish is one of the highest receivers of antibiotics. It takes about a half a pound of antibiotics to grow one pound of fish flesh. So all of those antibiotics are transferred over into the human. And it's been shown that that antibiotic transfer is part of the reason for the excess weight gain in humans. So, no, there's no reason to eat fish. Because again, any nutrient that's in fish is there because of what that fish ate. And even if that fish eats fish, the fish that that fish ate probably ate some form of sea vegetable. 
So it all ties back to go directly to the source. There's no reason to use these middle animals to get your nutrients when you can go directly to the source that they went to. And in doing so, you're going to feed the good microbes in your gut to tie us back into what we were talking about. So the foods that feed the good microbes are foods that are high in fiber, high in phytonutrients. And as you eat these foods, they're going to crowd out the bad microbes. Wild caught fish, depending on where you're catching it, still has issues because a lot of the water streams are poison there's heavy plastics in the water again unless you're unless you're living off the land and you need it because you don't have access to anything else there's no reason to eat fish and so if you're living in a regular city no um that again this is i'll use the analogy i keep i use it often when I talk about the giving up all of these things, people ask about this item or that item. If your house is on fire, engulfed in flames, are you going to run back in the fire to get the family photo album? If you do, you don't value your life. If you run into a burning house for a family photo album, you don't value your life. It's a material possession. So when I say you need to give up all of these foods that are adversely affecting your gut microbe and people ask, well, what about that? Or what about that? That's the equivalent of you running back into that burning building to grab a family photo album. Yes, seaweed. Because again, seaweed is a vegetable. So back into it. So... Foods high in fiber and phytonutrients. Phytonutrients are phenols and all of these other little scientific terms that are in fruits and vegetables that are not in meat because it has to be alive in order for it to be there. So once you start to improve your fiber and your phytonutrient intake, you're going to improve your digestion. You're going to improve your waste elimination. Because now your fiber, the fiber that is passing through your body is able to bulk up your stool and it is able to actually force its way through the tunnel of blockage that you have. It's going to improve your hormone response because now the healthy gut microbes has overtaken and out overcrowded the bad microbes. So now it's releasing and balancing your hormone levels. So now your insulin can start to balance itself out because it's not as much fat in the system. So now it doesn't need it. It's going to have the phytonutrients and the antioxidants to help do the additional healing that the body needs to counter affect the oxidization and what's been happening in the, the acidic effect of all of the bad gut microbe and gut flora. All of these words are interchangeable. And then once all of that happens, you're going to improve your nutrient absorption because now you don't have the excess waste sitting in your system where you're reabsorbing the waste and toxins that your body has been trying to get out of. Um, now your lining in the gut microbe is available to absorb the good nutrients and the phytonutrients that are in your food. So there was a question here. Where did that question go? Come on, come on back question. Got now that I kind of I'm kind of where I was. So thank you for what you do. What's the best way to transition from a sad? I know I need to change the way I eat, but keeping going on track is more than bad with the bad craving. So I can understand that. So the there's a couple of different ways to make the transition. There's two there's two routes. You can take the direct route where you cut everything off at once, or you can take a piecemeal route where you get rid of say this week you get rid of all processed foods the next week you get rid of meat for breakfast the next one you get rid of meat at lunch the next week you get rid of meat at dinner and now you're completely meat free and then you get to give up dairy at and all of those different ways so there's ways to wean your way off but if you're having immediate and major health issues 
I recommend the going cold veggie, which is just cutting everything. It will be a slight shock to your system, but with the right systems and tools in place, it can happen. If that's something you need help with, DM me the word transition and we'll talk about my transition program or if the healthy and fit 90 day program makes sense for you also. So DM me the word fit. If you're looking for fat loss, DM me the word transition. If you're looking to make the transition um, and, and improve your health. So how do you fix your gut microbe? The foods that you eat will do it for you. You have a choice of, they call them the two, well, there are three P's. I only put two of them here. Um, through the three P's are prebiotics, probiotics, and the third P is polyphenols, if I'm saying it correctly. Let me go back to it because I know I can read it correctly. But sometimes, where did it go? Yeah, I don't, I have come to the realization there is no reason for me to memorize things. A wise man once said, don't memorize anything you can look up. The three P's. Yep, polyphenols. See, I did say it right. And polyphenols are health promoting plant compounds. Okay, so once you start to eat more foods, i.e. fruits and vegetables, which are the highest in polyphenols, phytonutrients, and fiber, whether it be soluble fiber or insoluble fiber, which we'll talk about that on Thursday because we're going to be talking solely about fiber on Thursday. Citrus fruits good for decreasing initial inflammation to help with time. Yep. That's a, that's a good one right there, Korean. A good one. Citrus fruits are fantastic. Absolutely. Um, so, how do you get pro... So, man, you jumping the gun, Korean. So, yeah. So, prebi so, let's talk about prebiotics first. Since it's pre, it comes first. Spirulina is a great source of it. So, prebiotics... Um, feed the good flora and allows them to stay healthy and multiply. So fibrous vegetables and fruits are the best source of your prebiotics. They are high in bananas, green bananas, pistachios, asparagus, garlic, onion, oats, quinoa, millet, and chia seeds. All of your grains, as you just saw, your grains are going to be a great source of your fiber and your prebiotics. Now we can get into probiotics. Probiotics contain living healthy bacteria and ingesting them through food or drink immediately improves the balance of, fr of the friendly gut flora that you have. These are found in, so probiotics are found in yogurt, sauerkrauts, kimchi, and kombucha. And all of those things are fermented. So sauerkraut, Fermented. I was just um, and if you got a chance to get the bundle, the plant-based bundle that was available, there was a way on how to make um, krauts and other probiotics. So I hope you were able to take advantage of that. I'm not gonna bring it up if talk about it too much if you weren't. Um, so when you eat these, they are going to give you a high-quality probiotic, which is going to also Again, crowd out the bad gut microbes. What food is good for blood type A? That's an offline conversation. I don't do a lot of coaching on just blood, eating for blood type yet. I'm still learning a little bit more about that. But send me a DM and we can have a conversation later. But that's not this conversation. This one is really about understanding your gut microbe. <clears throat> so, probiotics, prebiotics, and polyphenols are the way that you take back control over your gut health. Yes, sir. Are you still on your call? Yes, sir, I am. Why, right, what's up? Why are you still on your call? I hope it's now time. I told you that I'd be on here for about an hour and that if I wasn't done by 9.45, you guys could go ahead and get in the shower without me. Well, we're about to take an early shower. Okay, yeah, it's only two minutes. So by the time you guys get done, I should be done. Uh, then we will go. To, then I will go to sleep. And then it'll be time for bed. Yes, sir. Mm. Why? What's wrong? I feel like it's only got a long time because I attended a lot of homework today. Okay. 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 Okay.
today. You did have a lot of homework today, but you also had a lot of time on your tablet before we did homework today, too. You just but didn't you have as much time on this video game. Time on video game. You did. You had a whole four hours. No, I said regular. Right, you had a whole four hours to play regular video games. Actually, if you count this last 45 minutes, you've had almost five hours. Now, can I please go back to doing what I was doing while you go do what you need to do? And we'll have this conversation when I'm done. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you all taking the patience while I talk to the little people in my life. Um, so, with that being said, I've kind of wrapped up where we were coming with this. So, the highlights to go back over real quick of the importance of the guts rolling and fat loss. Sundiata, please, you're being very loud. I'm, I'm gonna wrap it up pretty soon, guys. So, uh, as I was saying, so the gut is your in, in your digestive system, your gastrointestinal tract, no matter which term you wanna call it. It is filled with billions of bacteria that are either helping you or hurting you. You can feed the good bacteria by making sure that you eat foods that are high in fiber, high in phytonutrients, so that's whole food, plant-based. That's your fruits, your vegetables, and your grains. And then if you want to, and that's going to help you crowd out the bad bacteria that feeds off of sugar, meat, dairy, and all of those things. There are tons of different herbs that you can help along the way. If you need to do a body cleanse because you find that your body isn't working at its optimal, you, you're always fatigued, you're not pooping like you need to, you're just really down and out, I recommend go getting the Healthy and Fit Fall Bundle where you can get my 14-day detox program, which is seven different herbal blends that are going to help you detox your liver, your kidneys, your lungs, your large intestines, your lymphatic system, and then two whole body blends that'll make sure that your blood is cleansed also. You're also going to get a 14 day meal plan that comes along with that so that you're eating foods that are already incorporate all of the foods that we talked about today that are going to help you heal that gut microbe. On top of that, in that bundle, you're going to get my Southern Sunday dinner recipes made vegan recipe book where it's six recipes that you can use for the holidays to ensure that you're eating healthy as you fix the gut microbe that you just did when you did your detox. And on top of that, you're going to get the Going Plant-Based Made Simple video series, which breaks down how to go plant-based, overcoming the common pitfalls, and really giving you that base knowledge that you can use to hit the ground running. And then on top of that, you get a one hour consultation with me to really answer any question that you may have individually. So go click the link in my bio if you wanna take advantage of that bundle. Right now it is on sale half price at 337 versus the traditional $610 that it would be. If you want one-on-one -on -one coaching because you think the 90 day healthy and fit program is what you need, you need that handheld, that one-on-one -on -one handheld coaching for 90 days to ensure you get the support, the accountability, and the tools to make this transition and make this transition stick. DM me the word fit and we'll get a free discovery call scheduled for you so we can go over the details and see if it's right for you. It might be, it might not, I don't know until we have that conversation. So with that being said, now let's open it up to some questions. What questions do you have about the gut understanding the gut understanding how fiber and what you should eat plays a role in fat loss weight loss and health in general so we're going to open it up for questions because i'm pretty sure these little dudes are going to want my attention in a few minutes hey key what's going on sis and so again i appreciate everybody that's been here up to this point i'm gonna slow down my speech pattern because now i see i started rushing a little bit so now is the time if you want to request to go live and ask me your question live Peace, Earthy Nine. Or if you want to ask your question in the question box, go ahead and drop it down there in the question box right there. Can you talk about why the gas stinks? Mm, now that's a good question. So the reason why the gas stinks is pretty simple. The byproduct of what the bad gut microbe is putting off is a pungent gas. It's rancid. 
And so that's why your poop or your gas stinks. Now, once you start to eat more fiber, you're going to be more gaseous at first because that is the new gut microbe taking over and letting you know, all right, this is what's happening. That's the normal reaction. But you combat that by making sure that you drink plenty of water. You're drinking ginger and turmeric, which is going to help combat that gaseous um, byproduct. So I'm glad you brought that up because now we talk about one of the things that happens when you start to eat more fiber. I'm going to talk about it again on Thursday when we hit fiber alone. But when you start to change your, your gut microbe, you're going to experience going to the bathroom a little bit more. You're going to experience a little bit more gas. Um, but you're going to experience it being different in smell. So I had super bad gas before my my before going plant based. I stunk because I was still eating dairy, um, and I was still eating protein powders that had whey in it. And whey is a byproduct of dairy or whey isolate. Um, how do you feel about moringa? Moringa is one of the best foods that you can have. I have three moringa trees right outside my door right here where I go out and I pick it off. I'll eat it live. I'll grab the seeds, use them in smoothies. I'll grab the flour, eat it. The flowers are super sweet. Or I take it and I dry it. I make a powder out of it. I have it dried for tea. So moringa is where it's at. I recommend it. Yes, turmeric is a great one. I feel when I feel inflamed. So turmeric with black um, pepper is huge for fighting inflammation so the black pepper helps with the turmeric absorption and how how much and how much effect that it takes and so drinking it with the yeah you put it right there the black pepper you own it you own it Corinne. you own it so um so right now you got five more minutes before i gotta go and help these little dudes with that shower so if you have a question either go live Ask me your question live. Let's have, make this interactive. Or you can drop that question right down there in the question box and we'll get an answer for you. Right now we're talking about understanding the gut's role in fat loss and in health. What you need to eat to improve it. What you need to give up so that you can improve it. Or what you're eating that is causing a negative effect. Because like my sister Key was talking about yesterday, her son suffered from allergies. But when they switched up what he ate and they worked with his mindset, they reversed his allergic reactions because his gut microbe was different. So now the hormones and what his body is releasing is different. So you will find that once you heal and fix your gut microbe, you're going to see an improvement in all of areas of your body. How do I feel about matcha tea? Again, matcha tea is a great source of food because matcha is green tea. Green tea is high in polyphenols. Green tea is high in antioxidants. Green tea is in high in other um, phytonutrients as well. What yogurt do I recommend? I recommend a plant-based yogurt either made from co um, made from coconut milk. That's the that's the yogurt that I use. There is I've seen a cashew one. I've seen one from soy. Um, like Silk has one, but the one that I eat because I like the way it tastes is the So Delicious. It's made from coconut milk. Um, there is also oat yogurt. So basically yogurt is just when they've taken the milk that they've made and they fermented it. Um, that's basically all it is. So we got a question in the question box. When drinking chlorophyll or activated charcoal help the gut? Yes. The reason that that will help is because uh, chlorophyll is a great source of those polyphenols and a lot of the phytonutrient and antioxidants and activated char charcoal has its reasons. So I'm glad those were helpful. And so again, I appreciate everybody for being here and for joining me for this time. So. What do you suggest as far as supplement vitamins? I do not suggest supplements at all, except, except, of course, there's always an except. Yes, sir, I'll be in in about two minutes. Let me finish it up. One, two, three, minutes. That's been two seconds, sir. I said two minutes, little munchkin it's man. Been two seconds. And I said, give me two minutes. It's two minutes. Yeah, but the, the longer you talk to me, the longer it's going to take. It's going to take. So. 
I was talking about supplements and vitamins. So the only two supplements that I truly recommend are vitamin D supplement if you live in a place where you cannot get outside and get enough sun to get and produce your own vitamin D and a vitamin B12 if you're not drinking or taking enough um, spirulina, drinking fortified um, milks with, vit with B12 or eating enough nutritional yeast or noni because those are the plant-based sources for B12. Those are the only things I, I recommend supplementing. Outside of that, get all the rest of your supplements from the food that you eat. If you're having iron deficiencies, make sure that you eat more foods in iron and eat those foods with vitamin C because the vitamin C is going to help with the iron absorption. What I recommend you do is learn about parent food pairings and what nutrients help other nutrients be absorbed because they work and uh, they have a symbiotic relationship. Yes. Sea moss as a supplement. So I wouldn't say sea moss as a supplement. Um, I guess that's one way you can use it. I use sea moss um, because sea moss helps clear mucus. Sea moss is a great source of different vitamins and minerals. So if you're not eating a wide variety of foods, sea moss is a great way to supplement for those vitamins and minerals. What are you after? Clothes? You don't need to come over here. You don't need to come over here. Just go. I'll be done in two minutes, son. Let me finish answering these last questions. When will you guys be coming to Austin, Texas again? I am not sure when I'll be in Austin again. I am not going to be doing any more traveling until after the first of the year. Um, all of December will be spent hunkering down, working on new projects and tidying up things, finishing up things for the first of the year to ensure that I have new tools in place to better help you and moving forward in 2023. So I'll be tra I'll start traveling again in probably February because I'm not, again, I'm not going anywhere cold. I know it don't get too cold in Austin, but I'll definitely make that trip out there because I got to go see my man. Um, Marlon over at Community Vegan again, especially to get some more game before I go out to um, California for Southwest by Southwest. Um, I'm taking it in a powder, that's why I'm asking. So if you're taking sea moss in a powder, that works uh, as long as you're making sure you're getting it from a quality and value valuable source. So with that, join me tomorrow at 9. We will get into installment three of understanding plant-based fat loss we're going to be talking about inflammation and its role in fat fat loss and how eating plant-based is going to reduce chron chronic inflammation which is the problem that a bunch of adults um deal with so i appreciate you for joining me this live will be up again probably in about 10 minutes uh, so you can go back and re-watch it fast forward through to the parts that speak to you. Thank you for investing your time with me. Live healthy. Peace.